Hello, and I've got a bit of fluff in my eyes, so I'm not crying at the beauty of that uh, little melody that we played there. It's literally because I've got something in my eye. We hope it's fluff. It could be anything. It could be, it could I could be just anything. saw an Salient film. It could be a spore come to infest Lee's it could eye. Be. It could be a bit of early onset of hay fever. Yeah, I don't know that in Germany, actually, because, yeah, of course, I do get, I do the seasons that. sweep across the uh, land like the arm of God. So, talking of the arm of God, that's Captain Lee. And that's Rob Chapman. And we're at Anderton's in England in Guildford. Thanks for, tune- Thanks for tuning in on the old-fashioned <laughs> Valve Wireless, or however you're listening to us in wherever you are. Um, <laughs> hey. This last couple of days of shooting videos with this lovely human being on my right here have been a journey for Rob. A journey uh, through highs and lows, uh, self-doubt uh, of does he really know how to buy a new guitar? <laughs> and during that journey, we've asked soul-searching questions. We have. Do I have a soul? Yeah. What's um, the ultimate question? And what is the meaning of life? 42, which oh, is actually easy. next year for me. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and one of the conversations we had over lunch is, what guitar would you absolutely never, what other guitar have you never wanted? And yeah, for me, it's absolutely one of these. I just, it's, they're so big. And so, I mean, to me, they're cumbersome. This one, I, I can barely play it. It's the strings. <laughs> I don't know if it's a practical joke, but the strings are so tight, I can't really play them. Um, I think it sounds amazing. But for me as a player, I can't, I just cannot do my thing. It's, on not, it. it's not your thing. So I thought, well, I'm going to go into Anderton's uh, guitar department and pick out a couple of my favourite versions of a Gibson Semi acoustic guitar. Um, I own a 335 myself. Pete's got a lovely 335 that he's just put a Duesenberg tremolo system on it, which is awesome. But these two stood out of me, and you know, they're maybe a little bit left field. So um, we've got the 355, is that? Do you know what? I can't remember if that's a 355 or a 345. In it's the, the F hole, there'll, there'll be a little sticker in the F hole. It says guaranteed. Underneath that. ES355 guitar. 355, that's right. 1256709. So the 355 is basically kind of like your... I can barely get my um, arm over it, Lee. It's like, your th- it's like your 335 Custom. If you imagine what you know Gibson do, where they do Les Paul Standard, Les Paul Custom, this is kind of like the same thing. So you've got the ebony board, the block in there, the gold hardware. The Bigsby would have been an option on this. Um, and it's a wonderful guitar, and it's in that classic cherry red, and it's got Gibson's kind of VOS finish to make it look a little bit older, even though it isn't. So we, I like that, so we thought we'd have a play. This one, totally different guitar, a 330, which is um, a completely hollow guitar, unlike that which has the center block. This yeah. is a hollow guitar, a little bit kind of like an Epiphone Casino, that kind of vibe. That it, looks more my style. Really? So yes. again, we've got the, the, the P90s on here. Uh, again, Bigsby Trem system. Very, I mean, check that noise out. That's probably just my lapel that you're hearing. See, yours sounds more like a... a an electric guitar. This sounds more like an acoustic. Yeah, it? yeah, it does. I like that. And um, I just thought, you know what? I'm probably not going to be able to change Rob's mind about whether he would ever consider owning one of these. But hey, we've got nothing I mean, else to do on this here Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just that it's it's such a high tension. Yeah. Well, that's because it's probably got 10s, maybe it, even it's, 11s it's, on it. It's, it's either 10s or 11s. I think it's probably 10s yeah. in standard and quite a long scale length for me. And so for me, I can't... Any of my... That just hurts. Really? It's a painful thing, yeah. I don't think this is too, but... 
That said, I have massively manned up on my strings over the last eight weeks or so. Yeah. So I actually, all my strats now are 10 to 46, and, or, and all my Les Pauls, uh, or not, you know, all my all my kind of slightly shorter scale lengths are 11 to 48. I mean, on tour, I get tour core, and I get stronger hands, yeah. and, you know, you're playing for a couple tour of hours, hour and a half every night, tour claw is what I call it. TM so by the channel. end of that, does it feel like someone else's <laughs> I step up, but then I tune down a whole tone. Yes, you do. And, and for sure, a half tone. And so it's a bit softer. Well, so I'd like to feel how that feels well, in comparison will. to this we one. We will. So let's just, I will give you the three, maybe with a bit of dirt as well. You probably heard in the jam as well, this thing feeds back like a bugger if, if we got too much gain on it. famous casino player? Gary Clark Jr? Mm -hmm. John know. Lennon? Uh, I don't really know who'd be a famous 330 player. But it's so wholesome and fat and... Now, okay, as soon as I engage a bit of gain, or oh, right probably on the edge of feedback here. of harmonics and overtones yeah. coming through on that sound. I, I will absolutely agree, it sounds amazing. Uh, it's, it's purely from a playability point of view. Poo? It's not, it's not, it's not a PRS. It's not a less poorly. And never should it be. No. Oh look, just for a bit of product placement here, thanks Andy Ball for giving me a few sets of free uh, 11 to 48 power singles. But that's what I use. <laughs> a pussy basically just here <laughs> not an actual ladies lady garden but just like a cat when rod goes oh it's so hard to play <laughs> just have a cat appear here yeah for, for me it's just it's it's just a completely different animal designed really for a very different style that i don't yeah. do it's a it's a big cordy open strummy thing i don't do that um i used to i used to do it when i was you know a beginner and then, but now I'm all about the riffs and, and the lead. And you are a riffster rather than a chordster, aren't you? Yeah, I, I like chords. I have a oh, lot of sure. appreciation. I got a new chord that I learned from Pete recently, which is like this. And uh, it sounds better when Pete does it. But I, and also, how do you get over this? What? Because I, well, because I would play here, but now this is in my armpit. Uh, see, herein lies the. Oh, no, I don't know. I, it doesn't. Just I'm showing not... off my man boob. Look, my moob just flops over the top of it. I feel like uh, I should be like this. I don't know. It, it's. I mean, I, I will absolutely give you that my 335 does not get used as much as my Les Paul for, for entirely that reason, that I do find it a little bit kind of... But that said, until you just said that, I didn't even really think... You didn't consider it to be... I mean, well, I think in this demo, I did. For me, it's it's this is. I will never, 
ever buy one of these. No. It is absolutely categorically not my thing. Well, what happens when uh, Chapman I, Guitars make semi-acoustic guitars and you're forced under contract? They will. And they will not to play. Them. Forced under contract by myself. <laughs> they. They will. It's just that they will never be the width of my body like that. I mean, like they're wider than my body. I, I have a lot of respect for the tone, and and there are many things about this design that I like. I like, for example, that without it being plugged in. You can, you can hear it, and it sounds beautiful, Look. but for example, I have a hollow body, Les Paul. You do. That, that I would much rather play over this uh, kind of shape. Yeah. And I know the objective of this was to get Rob Chapman to go, you know what, actually, there's something about these that I really like, but you know I'm what? just not gonna the do that. The objective of this was nothing other than to fill a video slot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm always, again, the, the, I don't think the 335, I don't think the semi-acoustic shape, or, or even the, the, the acoustic guitar shape generally is an ergonomic design. I mean, there's really nothing about it that suggests you're gonna you know, play fast or be comfortable or any of those kind of things. That's a really good point, actually. I, I, never really I think you're, that. you know, you, you, you almost, at best, it doesn't annoy you. I don't think anybody goes, yeah, these, I find these so much more comfortable than, uh, do you know, I say that. There was, um, the, the, the uh, this is a weird shout out, this one is, but the, the, the designer that we used to do the shop fit for Anderton's in 2011 um, was a guitar player. And he was all about the, 335 and he said because he was like he was about six foot four quite right. a big guy and he was like the only guitar that i don't look stupid playing oh is, is, is a 335 right right okay so it's like well fair enough that makes yeah. sense or of course a bass so what does this sound like compared to then through a much cleaner amp let's this should be more like a les paul you know Why does that sound like the introduction to Dawson's Creek? Who remembers Dawson? Oh, yeah. yeah, this is much fuller and fatter and reminiscent of I an electric guitar. I for my life Let to be over again. Oh. I can't believe you remembered the same thing. I don't want to my life to be that over. Was. Back in the day, in the 80s, I'm just going to literally give a shout out to my wife here. And back in the days when we were much, much younger and before we had children and everything like that, we would lay in bed on a Sunday, having been out really late the night Netflix before. Netflix and chill. At, no, this is pre-Netflix and everything. And watch uh, episodes of Dawson's Creek. I think like Channel 4 used to, like the early versions of More 4 just used to have like whole days of Dawson's Creek. And we'd literally sit in bed watching Dawson's Creek until like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Uh, and then realised that we'd wasted an entire Sunday and we had to go to work the that next day. That is not a waste of a Sunday, man. <laughs> How long have you been with your wife for then? 14... Wow. No, way more than that. Sorry, 20... I was 26, so nearly 20 years. Wow. That's some... Wow. There you go, ladies. That's amazing. I've been off the menu for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off the God. menu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway... Kind of. Play 
play rock and roll, I really can't. more attractive girls doing that. Seriously, I've got a, um, a, a friend of my uh, father-in-law's uh, called Johnny Kelly. Shout out to Johnny, who probably isn't watching this because I don't think he knows how the internet works. But Johnny <laughs> Kelly uh, was in a band, what was it named? It was like Johnny Kelly and the... Crickets. Like the rocking crescendos or something right. back in the... They, he was on all those... Um, Bills in Germany in the in the uh, 60s where Hendrix was on the bill and all that kind of right, stuff. Right, right. He is a monster rock and roll guitar player. He's right. like 70. Must be he must be. I don't know mid 70s now. Mid 70s. Yeah. I do, although to be honest with you, so Johnny is a sweetheart. He has absolutely no idea that his guitar is constantly out of tune. Oh. He plays this Gretsch thing with like the tremolo falling off and everything like that. But it, and he just but he just makes it work. And I, I've asked him on loads. Of, it's like so show me the licks, Johnny. Like what are you doing? And he's like, well, you just go like. And I go, yeah, but I don't understand how you're doing that. And he's like, neither do I. Just like, what we, <laughs> just, just what it. we all learnt. Yeah. But yeah, monster, monster, monster player. Um, uh, these are, these are just, they are, they are. You know what they are? Pieces of, they're a point in history of a special thing. You know what they are, Lee? Yeah. The, this, for me, is what, for you, would be an eight string. So if I said to you, <laughs> Play an EMG loaded eight string guitar. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. immediate feeling you have yeah. is me when I'm uh, horror playing. Is the feeling well, not horror. Like, yeah. No, just, it is. Just, me, it's, it's just horror. like square peg round hole. Yeah, not horror of the guitar, but horror of the idea of like, oh no, what am I actually going to play yeah. on this guitar? No, yeah. really. I mean, if um, I if I took this, if I owned this and I took it home, I would immediately down tune it a tone, yeah. and then I'd probably write a bunch of really cool riffs, and that it would be a writing machine because I can. Yeah. It's got that acoustic vibe. Do you know, do you know the, the, the crazy thing about this whole last two days? I haven't changed the settings on the amp once. No, you haven't, have you? I haven't changed <laughs> the pedals that I've got, apart from the only thing I've done is change the, how much distortion is on the, on the pedal. And all I've really done is each guitar has inspired me to play different things. Yeah. And so I've got very different sounds in each video. Yes. From what is essentially the same rig. And that's, for me, that's the joy of different guitar shapes. And, and you know, and I know my wife will always say, why do you need another guitar and all this kind of stuff like that? And you go, well, watch every single video that me and Rob Chapman have ever done yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'll understand. Well, um, on that note, <laughs> I've been Rob Chapman. There is one last thing to say. There is one last thing to They're say. Assuming this I was going to say, last... are we shooting this on, on uh, as a separate piece of content? No, this... Or in this? this we'll shoot well, we'll this. do it both and then we'll put one on Facebook and one on, okay. on YouTube. So... Do you want to do it or shall I do it? Well, we're getting married. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Civil ceremony. You're all invited. Absolutely. It's going to be um, a beautiful rainbow day in Brighton. Now, there's a bit of a change occurring on the Rob Chappers channel, which is where you've been watching all the videos with myself and Lee. Um, For seven years. That's a long time, huh? I know. And I think, is, aren't we officially like, you know, a common law husband and wife <laughs> after seven I'm years? Prob I probably own half of everything that you own now. <laughs> Um, and then vice versa, so yeah, probably. Um, basically, uh, there are a couple of changes. The main change really is that all of the content that you've enjoyed with Captain and the Chappers is moving to Anderton's YouTube channel. So, not the old stuff, so everything that obviously. Everything that's already shot is, is staying always... on my channel, but anything new that Lee and I do, which is the regular eight videos per month, will now be on Lee's. YouTube channel because it just made more sense yeah. for Anderton's to have Anderton's content on Anderton's channel and um, that made sense and to it's, me. And it's great really because um, over the last three or four years you guys have been amazing at subscribing to the Anderton's channel and it's enabled me to employ um, loads of different presenters who will do different styles and we've got you know you'll see a lot more of Danish Pete and and uh, he'll be jamming with Rabir and, and Mick Taylor and but loads of different people and I just thought do you know what? If we could just have it like the home of all the best gear reviews on YouTube, um, actually, I'd probably, 
in my opinion I know, <laughs> I know there are loads of other great guys who do really cool YouTube stuff um, and that's on Anderson's TV and then I guess it kind of leaves you free well, to, so to, here's to the thing: so bloggy and vloggy and well no I, I realise that of course if the Anderton's content isn't going on my channel it gives me the opportunity to work with another really good friend of mine who actually owns one of the fastest growing American music industry retail stores on earth and it's Joe Leach from Rift City Guitar. So I'm also, as well as doing the content with Lee, which goes on Anderton's channel, Dave Hollingworth and myself are gonna be in America once a quarter filming videos with Joe Leach and all of those videos go on my channel. Very different yeah. kind of content to the Anderton yeah. stuff. But there'll still be lots of content on my channel yeah. to do with um, it's kind that of, kind of thing. I guess to a certain extent, it's the natural progression of what we're doing. If you're just used to watching a video and you see Anderton's in the background, you don't even really pay attention to what channel it's on. Then nothing's going to change. You'll still, guess, see, you'll still see the video turn up saying Captain and Chap is yeah, doing, doing absolutely. stupid. Absolutely. And and actually, what it's en enabling me to do as well is I'm going to do this so that some of the more just straight up gear reviews like oh here's a new pedal or whatever will be you know we'll probably just use some of the other presenters and it's and it's going to allow rob and i the sort of freedom to a certain extent to go what videos do people want to see what and what do we want to shoot yeah what comparisons should we be doing what maybe we might do some tuition-y stuff i don't know it, it'll just i'm feeling like it's set me free <laughs> um to just yeah, so I'm. It, it's very cool. So I'm excited about it. Um, um, I tip, from your point of view, you're going to see the same two muppets sitting in the same room every single month. Doing yeah, nothing the same really thing. changes for you guys, except uh, that there'll be more content from myself and Dave from Rift City yeah. Guitar. Oh, and, I, and that's exciting. And I love Joe Leach. And I know there's there'll be millions of you guys sitting in the USA that would love to shop with Andertons, uh, but for whatever reason, pricing, shipping, it's prohibitive for you to do so. And you should absolutely go and support Joe and Rift City and what he's doing because he's kind of he's kind of got all the same values and uh, attitudes towards customer service and everything that everyone at Andertons has got. So he's, he's not as big as Andertons and he may not stock as much stuff, but he's he's his heart and is, and everything is in the in the same place. Yeah. And I'm sure you know Rob he's a stand up guy. He's a stand up guy. Yeah. So yeah, if you're, in, if you're in the US, yeah, we've got two stores now. So if you're in the US and you know you want to go and support someone over there, then absolutely Joe's your man. Um, so that's it really? That's it. Yeah. If you're in Europe still, obviously please keep shopping with Andertons because you know, your custom is my lifeblood, which is all of our career, you know, things and life and everything. What he's saying is your money becomes his blood. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you <laughs> so yeah that's it and if you can't afford to buy anything just buy a t-shirt because we've got all these beautiful t-shirts that you'll see Rob and myself wearing and Pete and yeah and mugs anything like that these are only a fiver look at that you get it every time you literally a take fiver. a slurp of coffee you can imagine me and Rob in your mouth <laughs> which I know you guys do anyway with each mug comes with a free explosion with your cellophane over the keyboard just and in I want to say uh, I want to say a real quick thank you to uh <laughs> To people who always comment on these videos, like Hank Hill and, uh, like, and like Todd, and um, Hank, I must admit, is yeah, I, 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 he's just every comment is just pure genius. Love it. He's obviously sat there and thought about it too for a long time. So there's another, there's like another character as well, um, another one of the kind of like American Dad or what was he's One Tree Hill or whatever, isn't it? Hank Hill. Hank Hill is from uh, the that thing. Um, What's it called, Rabir? What's the cartoon with Hank Hill? Huh? King of the Hill. King of the Hill, not One Tree Hill. That was a U2 album or something, wasn't it? <laughs> something about a tree on a hill called Joshua. Um, yes. Yes, King of the Hill. So, yeah. Anyway, yes, please comment below. We love them all. Uh, obviously, every time there's a negative troll on there, it's... We're cutting, to this, we're cutting to this new ending because what Lee just said was really dark and twisted. It was. But basically, well, it was more I've dark been, than twisted. It was more dark than twisted. I've been Rob Chapman. I've been the captain, see and we'll see you next time on Anderton's, Anderton's TV! Channel. Fade into nothing. Bye.
Rory from the UK. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>